بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم دائما أبدا أبدا على حبيبك خير خلقه محمد وآله وأصحابه وأهل بيته وإترته وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا Respected brothers, sisters and dearest children I would like to welcome everyone to the to the series uh, 11, uh, 17th lesson in our weekly series of Siratul Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Uh, so, uh, sorry, I the, uh, there was a little bit of a um, problem with the Zoom. So now we are, I think, I think back to normal. So I want to welcome everyone, all the community members and all those who are coming in. Welcome to the uh, weekly series of uh, Siratul Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have gone through from lesson 1 to 16 up to last week, where we have, Alhamdulillah, covered all the historical aspects and all the way up to the first revelation, Alhamdulillah. And uh, we went through, you know, this uh, uh, situation uh, of Rasulullah Sallallahu where he is now isolating himself uh, into the cave Hira. And I mentioned the reason for that is that first of all, obviously he wants to get away from the, the evil environment uh, and isolate himself. And he is just sitting in this cave and those who have been to cave Hira, you will find that this, were, this is just a small area uh, where only one person can be accommodated. And I, uh, in fact, uh, it just so happens that it is actually facing the Kaaba. So when you sit there, you can see the Kaaba directly. So Rasulullah Sassim would just sit there, meditate. And I mentioned, I think, a couple of lessons before. This is also important for us to understand. This was obviously, he was isolating himself uh, and just getting away from everything. <clears throat> Um, and this is obviously before Islam, before the, the first revelation happened. Right? So in Islam, in fact, uh, later on we find from the Ahadith, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, has discouraged <clears throat> that we should sort of uh, uh, go into isolation. La rahbaniyata fil Islam. In Islam, there is no, you know, that, oh, I can't handle all this, so I'm going to get away from it, just isolate myself. This is not, in fact, the main test for us of Islam is that we live with everyone. We try to understand the rights of everyone. We try to understand the rights of our own self and all the others, and we have to fulfill them, the rights of the creation and rights of the creator. But of, of course, this is happening before Rasulullah Sassim is receiving the first revelation. So he's sitting there and there are two other reasons. One that he was having dreams now every day, as I mentioned, from the 40th birthday of Rasulullah Sallallahu which is the Rabiul Awwal. Uh, he is now daily having dreams, which are true dreams. And that is in fact the lowest, uh, lowest part, lowest uh, of the um, uh, revelation, the lowest level of 146 in hadith is mentioned that true dreams are 146th of revelation of Wahi. And uh, secondly, you know, he's hearing as he's walking, he's hearing the stones and pebbles around him. They are saying salam to him. You know, this is so all these things started happening to Rasulullah and he started feeling a bit awkward. I mean, I, anyone would, 
uh, and that's why he would go and sit in the in the cave and then finally we find that six months after which is now the ramadan in ramadan he gets the first revelation the first wahi and the first wahi is coming in such a way that the jibreel alaihissalam who actually used to bring the revelation he is the actual messenger of the heaven as has been described and in fact uh, there was a question last week also uh, that is there anyone else who uh, apart from jibril islam who brought the wahi so the answer to that is no only jibril islam is ordained by allah taala to bring the revelations so allah taala of course sometime he would go direct into the heart of the the prophet uh, as we find that he have he has done a uh, couple of time or sometime uh, allah taala would communicate talk to right uh, talk to the uh, this would be the form of uh, another revelation but most often it was jibril alislam it came through jibril alislatu salam uh, to all the prophets only in fact we find that uh, two occasion uh, where allah taala has actually spoken uh, the first uh, obviously occasion is um uh, musa alayhi salatu salam you know when he is on the mountain he he is lo- he is looking for light and he goes up and and there allah taala speaks to him right uh, and, and he is uh, initially he is baffled right so that is the first again. but in the in the case of our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam who in fact don't forget he is the leader of all the prophets Allah Taala gave him a very very high status. The time when uh, you know the the inspiration or or uh, uh, the wahi which Rasool Asalam had by having kalam with uh, talk to talking to Allah Taala is at the time of the miraj. In fact, we will be dealing with that when the time comes uh, in the sira. Uh, but you know when he went up to the heavens. and uh, he was with jibril alayhi salam and a point came in the the boundary after he had gone over the seven heavens uh, over the sidratul muntaha uh, and there in this boundary jibril alayhi salam stopped he said that i cannot go on any further and rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam went on and on and on you see this is uh, in in surah najm I don't want to go into detail in that. I'm just going to briefly mention in Surah Najm, Allah Taala is describing, you know, according to the some mufassirin, how close he came to Allah Taala. So he's the only one in the entire history of humanity who has the pleasure of actually reaching nearer, nearest to Allah Taala, and that is. Uh, you know that is obviously that the highest level of revelation that he is now he went on and on summa dana fatadalla fakana qab fakana qab qawsayni aw adna allah is saying in surah najm allah is wan najm idha hawa ma dalla sahibukum wa ma ghawa wa ma yantiqu anil hawa in huwa illa wahyu yuha allah taala is describing and then is summa dana fatadalla فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى He came near. Allah Taala is giving an example in the Quran of the uh, a tradition, in fact, or custom, which the people of Mecca or the Arabs had in those days, where two very close friends, when they would meet each other, you know, we all have friends. but there are some friends who are very close to us so when they would meet each other the the arab tradition was that you know in those days they were using the bows and arrows and a, a bow is a semi circle you know it's a it's a wood with a string tied uh, is a semi circle so when these two friends came close they would put their bows together to make the complete circle right fakana qaba qawsayni aw adna allah is describing that that this qaba qawsayn when they would bring them together 
and close that circle, that was a sign that they are very close. So Allah is saying, they, he came close to Allah Ta'ala, according to the one tafsir of this ayat, he, claimed to, he, he came close to Allah Ta'ala, in fact, more closer than this, uh, the circle. You know, so he, he was there. And there Allah Ta'ala actually talked to him. And obviously this is uh, uh, according to some ulama, and there is obviously a difference of opinion in this, uh, but some of them, you know, that this is the, uh, according to one rewrite, is the At-Tahiyyat we are reading. And this is actually a kalam. At-Tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat. You know, when, uh, when obviously Rasulullah Sallallahu when he's so near and he is seeing the magnificence, which no one had the opportunity or will have the opportunity, he is looking at it and you know, he's uh, out of uh, great, you know, the astonishment, the words which come out, At-Tahiyyatu, he's praising Allah Ta'ala, At-Tahiyyatu lillahi, was-salawatu wa tayyibatu. He's sending rahmat and salawat, and Ya Allah, you are so pure and clean. What, whatever he saw there, we don't know, right? And then at that time, Allah Ta'ala is replying back, As-Salamu Alaika, Ayyuhan Nabiyu. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Right? So this is the this is where we get the salam also from. You know, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is what where when we are reading the tashhad when we are sitting down. Assalamu alaikum ayu an nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And at that time, ulama they say that Rasulullah sallam did not forget us. He is there alone, standing in front of Allah Taala, very close to Allah Taala, and of course you know his. Uh, bewildered by the magnificence of whatever he's seeing there and at that time he's receiving the salam salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah salam and the mercy and the barakat all these and at that time he's he's adding he's remembering his ummah his followers right and he's he's saying assalamu alaikum ayyuhan nabiyyu wa rahmatullahi wa assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin and also this salam and all this on all those who are the righteous ones. All those of my ummah who will continue until the day of judgment. The, this salam extends to them. Ayyuhan Nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salamu alayna wa ala ibadillah his salihin. Those who are the ibadallah. Those who are worshippers of Allah Ta'ala who are the salihin and the righteous. So, so this is one level of uh, revelation, which in fact, you know, only uh, two prophets had the had this opportunity. One is Musa al-Islam. He's also one of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, prophet who could talk to Allah Ta'ala, Kalimullah. Uh, you know, in his time, the, the kalima was, La ilaha illallah, Musa Kalimullah. That was his kalima. He would speak to Allah Ta'ala. So, but he was speaking and he was in this dunya right and in fact he requested we are i think diverging into uh, but you know it, it's it's probably a good idea to just understand the the status and honor which allah ta'ala has given to our prophet sallam he is talking to allah ta'ala he, and in fact he requested allah ta'ala uh, at one time which is mentioned in in uh, in quran that Ya Allah, I want to see you. And Allah Ta'ala said, You can't see me. You know, no, no one can see me. You don't have the power. So in the end, Allah Ta'ala said, Okay, turn your surface. And Allah Ta'ala showed a, a tiny glimpse of his uh, tajalli, which came on the mountain. Uh, and what happened? The mountain burnt into ashes. And Wakharra Musa Sa'iqa. And Musa al-Islam fainted, <laughs> right? So, so this is, but here, you know, Allah Ta'ala has invited his beloved, Habibullah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he has gone over the seven heavens, and he's gone all the way past Sidratul Muntaha, and then he has reached uh, uh, the level where even the angels cannot go, 
you know, Jibreel salatu salam cannot go. And he went on and he came so close to Allah Ta'ala, as is described in Surah Najm. And now Allah Ta'ala is talking to him. So imagine his, uh, his status and honor of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our beloved. We are the follower of that Prophet, Rasulullah. We should be really uh, proud of the fact that Allah Ta'ala has, uh, he was so close to Allah Ta'ala. So anyway, so that's one form of the, of the revelation that Allah Ta'ala would speak. Uh, and then the, the second form of revelation would be, uh, was that sometime Allah Ta'ala would, without the intervention of Jibreel or any angel, he would come directly into the, into the heart. He would bring whatever, this is known as, you know, the, to ilqa something, uh, to bring it into the heart whatever Allah Ta'ala wants. And this obviously is a type of inspiration which uh, not necessarily we can say is a sign of prophethood. Because uh, in the time of again Musa salam, when the Firon had actually uh, decided to uh, kill all the, when the, you know, the fortune tellers told him that a child is going to be born and when he will grow up, he's going to destroy your, uh, your kingdom. Uh, so he, he was killing all the children. And at that time, Musa, Musa al-Islam's mother, she was, she was worried. You know, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, every mother, obviously, is worried about the child. So Allah Ta'ala, at that time, Quran is telling us, inspired her. That don't worry, we are going to, you know, these are the words. I'm just giving you the near meaning that don't worry, you put your, the son into a basket and, and then I'm going to bring your son back to you, right? So whatever, so this is also inspiration. But, you know, that doesn't mean that uh, the mother was a, a prophetess. No, uh, this is one way Allah Ta'ala can come into the, the hearts to bring something in. And that obviously, you know, like... Uh, when we do the istikhara also sometimes, you know, uh, we are uh, in, uh, in a situation where we are very worried or we want to do something very special. <clears throat> we are unsure of it. And, and at that time, we, we, we uh, you know, the sunnah way of Rasulullah Sassam is that we read two rakat salat and then there's a dua mentioned about istikhara. Uh, and in that we say to Allah Ta'ala that, Ya Allah, uh, uh, you know everything. I don't know anything. Uh, if there is any good for me in this action or in this uh, uh, thing with, uh, which I am about to do, uh, if there is any good in it, then please make it easy for me uh, uh, and enable me to have it. And if you find that there is, and on, you only know, I don't know what in the future what will happen to me. Uh, if you find that uh, there is evil or there is any terms, types of harm in this thing, then you know, please take it away from me. Uh, may create a distance between me and this thing. So this is the time. So this also, and then when we go to sleep, sometimes we get a uh, we we get a situation where uh, you know um, uh, the uh, inspiration comes in the form of a dream. Sometimes we may have a dream, or sometime after the sahara when we get up in the morning, we are feeling. You know, uh, we are feeling towards one 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 side of this uh, amal or action we were supposed to do. So that's also inspiration, right? So this is a, uh, a, a and then uh, then the couple of ways where uh, the revelation or the wahi was coming to Rasulullah Sallam, we find that one was that he would come in the in the form of a human. In fact, uh, ulama have written that that, is, that was the, the easiest uh, and the most comfortable way for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That when uh, Jibreel Islam would come, and in fact, this is what happened. Uh, in fact, the first revelation, as we found last week, uh, the first revelation where uh, Jibreel Islam Islam came in the, his original form, you know, with the 600 wings and a huge, you know, angel is covering the entire 
uh, heaven, you know, uh, above, uh, and Rasulullah Sassam is seeing this, and he's really, you know, frightened, uh, as we can imagine, and and then suddenly he came and came closer and closer, and he came into a, a form of a human, and this form of the human, uh, obviously, because this is the first occasion for Rasulullah Sassam, he didn't recognize him. He, Uh, uh, the so uh, he came and he suddenly and obviously this was enough to shake Rasulullah Sallam and Rasulullah Sallam now uh, received the the first revelation Iqra uh, and this is uh, you know uh, as I mentioned last time the the meaning Iqra uh, read this is a it's, a it's an action word. Uh, which means read, but uh, it could have two meanings. One is that you say something and you ask someone to read, you know, uh, or in, in reality, repeat. Uh, but the other is, which is what uh, ulama and mufassirin are saying, that he has a silky cloth with him and he put in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu And this is where the five verses were written. And then he asked Rasulullah Sallallahu to read. And this is why Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, at that point mentioned that I am a Ummi. Uh, I cannot read or write. You know, this uh, he mentioned. So, uh, and then now, uh, after second time uh, the, uh, or third time, uh, Jibreel Salatu Salam uh, hugged him. And after hugging him, Somehow, this person who could not read or write, now everything has been transferred. You know, so this is a, this is a form of uh, uh, knowledge getting transferred. The abilities of uh, being a wise person, being educated person, all being transferred. So this is also something which obviously this is this is what happened, and it still happens. You know. Uh, I gave a story last week also that sometimes when we serve someone, our elders and scholars who are actually true scholars, you have to be very careful these days uh, that those who are following the sunnah, those have the fear of Allah Ta'ala. If you remain in the company of those people, then you gain a lot. You know, Sheikh Saadi uh, he, he he mentions in his... Uh, you know, uh, one of the phrases, very beautiful phrase, he says, uh, uh, That you spend a little time in the company of the righteous people, the, the person who has the fear of Allah Ta'ala, the person who is close to Allah Ta'ala, you know, you spend one, and how do we determine the person? Is, you have to look at his life. How many sunnah is he following? Is he, is he during his 24 hour following the sunnah way in every aspect? In his, in his 24 hour, in his eating, in his sleeping, in his going out, in his coming back in, in his meeting, whatever he is doing, if the person is following the sunnah way of Rasulullah Sallallahu that person is a wali or a, you know, a, a friend of Allah Ta'ala. And to remain in the company of such, Sheikh Saadi is saying, uh, you spend a little time in the company of such people, what will happen? It is better than you know, 100, 100 years of sincere ibadat or sincere obedience of Allah Ta'ala. You, a person spends 100 years of, uh, of very sincere in, with the class, he's doing the ibadat of Allah Ta'ala. That, uh, and a person is remaining in the company, you are going to gain a lot. So, uh, because spiritually, you will gain right, uh, from these people who, who, who spend their time and they are, they are sincere and they have the fear of Allah Ta'ala uh, and they don't commit any shirk. You know? So, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu has seen this and is, uh, you know, the, the wahi, I have to come back to the subject. There's so many things, that, in fact, you know, uh, uh, and this is, in fact, as I mentioned last time also, that the, 
the the lesson is of the knowledge this umma in the first revelation has been uh, encouraged to learn read and write you know and allah taala has given these two two aspects of, uh, of gaining knowledge you know through the prophets and the, the power of speech through adam alayhi salatu salam and the power of uh, writing through the first prophet uh, who, who was able to write with us, Idris alayhi salatu salam, as mentioned. So uh, now the Allah is saying, Iqra. You know, it's a lesson for the entire Muslim world to understand that Islam, the first revelation, is encouraging us to go for knowledge. You know, knowledge is the most important thing. Knowledge is the thing with, of course, the fear of Allah Ta'ala with obedience is going to bring us nearer to Allah Ta'ala. And if you are ignorant, and if you don't, if you have don't have the knowledge, then that there is a great danger that you are going to get further and further away from Allah Taala. So uh, the first revelation is teaching us, Iqra Bismi Rabbi Kaladi, and Maana Bikari. Rasulullah is saying uh, that I don't, I can't read or write. I, 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 I'm not a literate, right? So. Um, so now again he's saying read you know and creating that ability so that he is able to read and uh, and then he starts ikhra bismi with the name of allah taala so anything we do this is also another lesson hidden you know a symbolic lesson in there for us that anything we do we start with the name of allah taala bismillah you can't go wrong if you if you are doing everything with the name of Allah Taala, then you will not go wrong. So um, and now Rasulullah Sallallahu after re re receiving this is shaking. He's he's obviously frightened. He doesn't know what has happened, and he comes back. And I mentioned that he goes straight to his wife, uh, Bibi Khadija, and the the task of a wife is to give comfort to the husband, and she is doing everything. She, she brings him. She says, what happened? Tell me. She listens first. Right? Obviously, that's also important that, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't come uh, jump to conclusion, as they say, you know, without listening to something. You should first find out what, what's happened. Uh, Sometimes we end up, uh, uh, you know, being so uh, grossed with the situation that we, uh, we don't even listen to the. So we first find out. So she listens and he describes that, you know, this is a huge thing came and then suddenly he became a human and then he, uh, he asked me to read and then he squeezed me uh, uh, in such a way that I thought I was almost dying. And, and after describing, he said, I am really afraid of myself. I'm afraid. I'm frightened. You know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. So now at that point, you know, uh, the the intelligent and wise wife Shula, at this time she's playing the role of a wife and she's a woman in fact she's she's in fact is uh, uh, the 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 status in fact you know this is also something which we uh, we should understand the the status of the first person to accept islam on the hand of the leader of all the prophets that has gone to a woman bibi khadija radiallahu ta'ala the first woman who, who accepted so she's, she's saying, she's comforting Rasulullah Sallallahu She's saying that, look, uh, I know you. Uh, you. You are always helping people. You are always helping the, the poor. Uh, you are taking care of the orphans. You are looking after the widows. Uh, and, you know, you, you go out of the way to, uh, to be kind to people, to help. So who can harm you? No one can do anything. Uh, and she, she comforts. Rasulullah uh, uh, and then after a while uh, she actually takes Rasulullah Sallallahu to this uh, one of in fact uh, Waraka ibn Nawfal he is he's actually related to Bibi Khadija radiallahu anha she is so and he is someone who has actually you know gone away from the shirk of the Arabs and and, and in fact uh, he is believing in the Nasrani, you know, the uh, uh, 
the Islam of Isa al Islam, which is the true Islam, in fact, not calling, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jesus, Isa al Islam, as the son of God. He doesn't believe in that also. He believes in as a prophet. In the true form of that, that religion, he was, he was the only person who was believing in that. Warakha uh, ibn Nawfil. He was very uh, highly in, intelligent and spiritual and knowledgeable about the deen of Musa al Islam and Isa al Islam. So he, she takes him and they, they sit down and Rasulullah Sallallahu is still, you know, shaky and, uh, and then they describe what happened. And when he hears all this, immediately, obviously, because he is knowledgeable. And in fact, you know, incidentally, uh, Torah, the Old Testament and Injil, the, the Bible, in both of them, uh, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned about the arrival of Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's already been given, right? So uh, the, uh, the form, in fact, uh, from previous books, we find there is a mention of that. And when he hears about this big person, a huge thing, and he immediately recognized that that, uh, that is the, uh, you know, in, in, uh, they used to call it Namus, the keeper of secrets, you know. So when uh, Waraka ibn Nawfal, he heard, uh, he immediately said, oh, you do, you have, you've got nothing to worry about. In fact, he con congratulated uh, Bibi Khadija. And he said, like, your husband, uh, has bec has now become or is in the process of becoming uh, uh, a prophet, right? So um, and and you know uh, he he gave glad tidings, uh, and he he again he comforted Rasulullah Sallam that you know um, where, uh, you are kind to the uh, orphans and you are kind to the widows and you are kind to the uh, you know, um, everyone, so no one can harm you. In fact, you know, he said, I wish, you know, this is, uh, I wish uh, I would have been alive uh, to see the time when, you know, your people uh, of the people of Mecca will ridicule you uh, and will prosecute you and then will expel you from Mecca. So Rasulullah Sallallahu is listening to all this and then, you know, uh, ridicule and, and persecute. He understood, he, he said that's something. But when he, when he heard that he will, they will expel you, he, he was surprised. He said, they are going to throw me out? You know, how can they throw, <laughs> throw me out from uh, Makkah uh, when I am sort of uh, so kind and generous and everything? Uh, so when he heard this, he was a bit surprised. And... You know, Waraka ibn Nafil is telling him this, that, you know, I wish I was with you at that time to be your support. So from that ulama, they have mentioned that in reality, the first person who accepted Islam uh, was actually Waraka ibn Nafil. <laughs> you know, that he, he said, I wish I was with you when, when this will happen. Right? This is only the first revelation. After that, uh, so he is already... Uh, has received, in fact, he's on the, the verge of becoming a prophet. Um, um, and and Waraka ibn Nawfal is telling him that when they will do this, so Rasulullah Sallallahu is a bit surprised that they are going to throw me out. Uh, and uh, um, how, how? So he said, you don't have to worry because I know from the Torah and you know, again from the, the books of Allah Ta'ala that the prophets they had to face these uh, tribulations and, and persecutions. Uh, this was part of being a prophet, that they had to face and give the sacrifice for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala loves Islam and deen so much that he had made prophets suffer uh, when they made the efforts, right? Uh, and uh, of course, Rasulullah Azam is just, he's received the first lesson. Uh, he hasn't actually you know, started the duty of a prophet yet. That's, that's again, uh, you know, the ulama, they describe what is a prophet? One who starts, you know, giving uh, 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 the message and this message, what is the, the, the wahi? 
the message who is receiving. You know, the wahi actually is, you know, uh, so if the, the revelation is something which someone brings in a secret way, and it's a secret message which is being passed on, and this is Jibreel Salam bringing to Rasulullah Sallam, and the first lesson is to acquire knowledge, read in the name of Allah Taala, and try to understand that Allah is the is the Creator, you know, and and now uh, so Waraka Ibn Nawfal is the first person. You know, and then Rasulullah Sallallahu they went back, you know, comforted. He, and now, you know, days are passing by. Uh, according to some Mufassirin, uh, almost a month has gone by. And now Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, in anticipation, he goes out every day. Uh, and towards where he saw Jibreel Sallallahu Alaihi He's expecting, although he was so frightened for, from him. So he, 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 he goes out, he, he's looking for, you know, where, where is he? Why is he, hasn't he come back? Uh, and he's doing that uh, at that point. And then all of a sudden, I think now he, from Ramadan, he's moved into Shawwal, a month has passed. Uh, and at that point, suddenly when he's walking, he hears someone call his name. So he, obviously, if you, if, you, if you hear someone calling your name, you would look in the front. Or you look in the side, or you, you know, no one, you know, someone calls you by name. No one looks in the in the sky or heaven. So he's looking and he can't he can't see anything. And then when he sees up, he sees again Jibreel Salatu Salam, and he's sitting in his throne. There is a chair, and on that Jibreel Salatu Salam is sitting. He sees it, and you know, ulama they, they have taken out some uh, you know uh, lessons from this. That when he sees him again, although he is looking for him for, for days and he wants to see him, but as soon as he sees him, it, it's, he starts fr getting frightened again. You know, the image of Jibreel Sadhu Salam is frightened. And this is the human part of Rasulullah Sallallahu This is what, you know, uh, the, the, the ulama, they say, that's what makes it original. The Rasulullah Sassam is a human being and he received in this, in the way he has received it, it has to be true. Unlike, you know, uh, there have been a couple of people or a few uh, or there will be more who have claimed that they are prophets. Who, who created such a grandeur picture of a prophet, being a prophet that, you know, it was like this and like that. It almost makes it untrue 100%. But here, Rasulullah Sallallahu in his true situation is being described that when he is now looking again and he is now, when he sees him again, he's frightened again. And he goes back, Miluni, Zamiluni, cover me, cover me. He gets, you know, when, uh, what, what, what do you say, you know, when you see something really frightening, right? What happens? You know, the, in, in English, there is a phrase which says, uh, it puts shivers in my spine. This is what, <laughs> what happened to him, probably the Prophet Sallallahu So he went back and he, he, he said, cover me. And so he's, he, he's covered in, a, in this long cloth or a shawl, if you like. And this is where now Jibreel Islam follows him and he arrives. And then the second revelation, after almost 30, 40 days, probably, uh, the second revelation comes. Ya ayyuhal muddathir. Oh, who you who is covered in this long cloth, right? And I think this is where we we've gone over the time. In fact, there was a little bit of a hiccup uh, in the beginning, so we ran over a little bit. So uh, now it's getting more interesting. The second revelation is about to come. Rasulullah Sallam has gone through this situation, and and he's now uh, is in fact in the true sense of a, being a prophet. This is the second revelation is giving him the task of the prophet. You know, that, that's now you have to get up and start making the effort for Islam. So that's, that's actually, you know, revelation is one aspect of prophethood. And then the second part is that the, to go and, and uh, that is the mission to start uh, taking the message across. 
uh, inshallah we will continue uh, uh, i hope you have found this uh, interesting inshallah and in fact you know uh, uh, you know sira is such a thing that the more you talk about it and in fact you know you can spend uh, years and you cannot get to there's so many things are connected it depends you know if you spend the time with the, your elders then and you hear from them yeah, and so many things you have to make sure that you stick to the uh, you know the the narrow pathway so that you are able to but i want to actually bring you know all the aspect which comes into my mind uh, i i'm obviously i do prepare a little bit but whatever comes now from allah taala i want to give everything uh, to the uh, you know to the, to uh, to the audience in fact and to those who are listening so, and so that you know let's take it in the natural way as it comes from allah taala uh, and uh, it's very interesting uh, and inshallah the more we will learn about our beloved prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam and the more we should be sending salawat on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, may allah taala give us the ability wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana muhammad wa ala ali sayyidina maulana muhammad wa sallim rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim wa tub alaina innaka antat tawwabur rahim سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك نستغفرك ونتوب اليك نستغفرك ونتوب اليك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله جزاك الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله